Giants are not what we think they are. The same qualities that appear to give them strength are often the sources of great weakness. Malcolm Gladwell Most people know the story of David and Goliath. It's the ultimate underdog story. The shepherd, David, goes into battle with the fierce and giant warrior, Goliath. Armed with only a sling, somehow David wins the fight that he shouldn't have. Or should he have? What if I told you David could shoot stones hard enough to embed them into the flesh of his target? What if I told you that slingers, as they were called back then, often killed birds in mid-flight or hit coins from as far away as they could see them with these weapons? Now consider that Goliath was weighed down with probably close to 100 pounds of armor and weapons. Next, if Goliath was such a giant, he probably had growth hormone issues that in modern times are known to cause eye and brain issues. Let's look at the fight again. Goliath was trying to chase down David wearing 100 pounds of armor and possibly couldn't even see David all that well. On top of that, he might have been slow th of thinking not realizing that he would struggle to catch David, and that he was actually in grave danger. David, on the other hand, wore no armor and could easily stay away from Goliath. He had time to take multiple deadly shots before Goliath came close to him. When you look at the fight this way, Goliath never stood a chance. In Malcolm Gladwell's book, David and Goliath, he examines many such underdog stories and challenges our perceptions of strengths and weaknesses advantages and disadvantages, and blessings and misfortune. We want to highlight three main concepts that we found in the book. The first is adopting a different strategy. David didn't put on a suit of armor and a sword to fight Goliath. He probably would have been crushed. Instead, he used his size, speed, and agility to his benefit. In a study done of the wars of the last 200 years, when the larger force had over 10 times the population size as the smaller, the larger won 71.5% of the time. However, when the smaller side fought with unconventional tactics, like guerrilla warfare, they became the heavy favorite, winning almost two-thirds of the time. Vivek Ranadive was coaching his daughter's junior high basketball team. His team was inexperienced and lacked the skills of many of the teams that they would play. So what did he do? He instituted a full-court press, something most teams weren't ready for, and only required hustle, not skill. Just like David, Vivek's team beat countless opponents who were supposed to beat them. They used what many would consider unconventional tactics and their strengths to get victory after victory. Next, the inverted U-curve, or the N-curve. The N-curve represents the fact that for giants, there is no such thing as too much of a good thing. Barry Schwartz and Adam Grant said, all positive traits, states, and experiences have costs at high levels that may outweigh their benefits. A great example of this is happiness as it is affected by wealth. Up to about 75 k a year, there is definitely a correlation between happiness and increased wealth. Once you cross the threshold of 75 k very little additional happiness can be correlated with further increases in earnings. The end curve has three phases. The left side, where doing more has more effect. The top section, where further efforts don't result in more results. And finally, the right-hand side, where more effort actually has a negative effect. Take classroom size, for example. Studies show that as the size of a school class grows from 0 to about 15, the educational performance increases. More kids means better discussions and ideas that are being shared. This is the left side. There is little difference in class sizes between 18 and 25, the quote-unquote optimal size. Once classes get bigger than 25, you see a drop in the educational quality because individual students aren't getting enough attention. The end curve can also be seen when looking at students in elite schools versus those that go to merely quote-unquote good schools. The 55th percentile at Harvard is just as academically gifted as the 99th percentile at many good universities, but the students in the 99% at a good university will have many more opportunities than the average Harvard grad. The last concept is that of turning a weakness into strength. Most people would consider being dyslexic a hindrance to somebody who wants to be a lawyer. David Boyes turned it into a strength though. Because reading was so difficult for him, he learned to listen very well 
and memorize what his teachers taught. In the courtroom, this gave him the ability to quickly listen to testimony and recall it later in the case. He could also hear weaknesses in the argument of other lawyers because their tonality would differ slightly. Losing a parent young is another perceived disadvantage, but 67% of UK prime ministers lost a parent before they were 16 years old, and same with 12 of the past 44 US presidents. As many as 45% of creatives lost the parents by the time that they were 25. A traumatic event early in life is believed to help build psychological strength in these kids. They had already survived one of their worst fears at a young age, so they were better able to cope with the struggles and difficulties that life throws at us all. Maybe Nietzsche was right when he said, that which does not kill us will make us stronger. Remember, giants are not what we think they are. The same qualities that appear to give them strength are often the sources of their great weaknesses. In any situation where the unexpected occurs, it is possible that you just had the wrong perspective on the events, and by looking at a situation from another lens, the unexpected becomes expected. On the surface, most people would think that Tiny David shouldn't have had a chance against the great warrior Goliath. Most people would be wrong. If you enjoyed this summary, check out our book summaries of Talking with Strangers and Outliers, two of Malcolm Gladwell's other books. And if you have a book that you'd like to see us summarize, leave it in the comments below and it may just be one of our next videos. While you're down in the comments section, do us a favor and hit that like button, then subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release any of our new animations.